everyone. Welcome back to part two of Weezing for Soup. In the last episode, we talked about seeing Weezer live on their Voyage to the Blue Planet tour. And in this episode, we're going to talk about another concert where they play the album in its entirety. Another band that is also about 30 years old. I'm also as old as Bowling for Soup, Weezer, and Dookie. The years keep coming and they don't stop coming. Bowling for Soup, I think, genuinely, is one of the best bands on the face of the earth. Uh, genuinely. I know that this kind of the meme where they say, oh, we're the world's greatest band. But I think it's true. To kind of give us some context here, back when I was a wee baby boy in the year 2006, Cartoon Network had something called Friday Night. And if you don't remember Friday Night, it's where they would have various cartoon blocks, they would show lots of episodes, and what they would normally have is special guests. Fun fact, did you know that both Rihanna and Yellow Card performed during the Cartoon Network Friday Night Block? Yeah, it's true. The reason why I mention this is that way, way back on June 26th, 2006, I was stuck at my aunt's house. Now, I never really liked staying at my aunt's house when I was a real little kid, mainly because they would throw me down in the basement and the basement was kind of dark and depressing away from everybody else. But what was nice is that they had a really big, you know, block TV down there that I, of course, could use. You know, when it was ready for bedtime, I would go down in the basement to sleep and, and then I could watch TV. And I wasn't feeling great, you know. Being in 2006 as a wee lad was kind of rough, you know, struggling to make friends, being in middle school, or I guess just transitioning to middle school, you know, being forced to go to awful summer camps, things like that. And the last thing I wanted to do was spend another night, at least right now, down in the dark basement. So by the light of the CRTV, I start watching Cartoon Network's Friday night. And I had a great time. I always had a great time watching Cartoon Network's Friday night. And lo and behold, a musical guest was Bowling for Soup. Now, I'd never heard of the band at this point, considering I was, you know, pretty young and didn't really have internet access. But of course, we everybody knows the song 1985, but I didn't know it was them. So what ended up happening was, is I watched Bowling for Soup come out, and it wasn't the full band, I, I, it was Jerry, and I forget who it was, maybe, maybe Chris, I, I don't remember. But they played a couple of acoustic songs, and I was like, oh, I really like that. And that was my introduction to Bowling for Soup. And from there, I, I, I was hooked. Coincidentally, my favorite album from Bowling for Soup is a hangover you don't deserve. It's just really, really good front to back. I know it's kind of long and we'll talk about that later in the video, but it's got a lot of really, really good songs. And I think some of the songs are very, very underappreciated as well. But from that jumping point, it was all history from there. And then Bowling for Soup would have uh, like a lot more really good albums that came after that. And of course, the Phineas and Ferb theme song. Hmm. What made Bowling for Soup so special to me was not just like, the comedy, because comedy is a big, big part of it. I mean, they are just genuinely really, really funny dudes. Like, watching them interact on stage with each other is just absolutely amazing. I was crying with how funny it was. But there's also a, a sincerity that comes with their songs. Like, one example here. High School Never Ends. I didn't understand that when I was in high school. I didn't understand it till years and years later on how true that was. Not until you get to college and you start working in the real world, you realize that Bowling for Soup was fucking right and high school doesn't end. It's songs like that that have always been must-haves on my playlists. It's songs that I come back to frequently. Uh, my friend went to go ahead and offered to take me to go see Bowling for Soup. Uh, she was generous enough to go ahead and splurge on the backstage passes, or I suppose the uh, VIP passes, so we got to actually meet them before the show, get some nice photos done beforehand. And that was really, really nice, and I'm genuinely really, really grateful that my, my friend went on a limb and went, went and did that for me because I, I had a fucking ball. I really wish that I had a chance to see them on the Getting Old Sucks tour. It just didn't work out with my schedule, and I hadn't really had a chance to see them for the past, you know, 10 years, give or take. I had one chance to see him when I was in college, but I got really sick the night of, so I decided not to go. And I kind of regret not going, but I'm so, so glad that I was able to go ahead and finally get to see the greatest band on the face of the earth. Now, Bowling for Soup, uh, I hate to say this, but never really hit superstardom. 
maybe within the punk rock community, but beyond that, besides a couple of songs here and there, the mainstream was just barely kept out of Bowling for Soup's reach. And, and personally, I think that's a sin. I think Bowling for Soup really does deserve to have sold out stadiums just like Green Day, Weezer, all these other freaking bands that I go ahead and see. I genuinely think that Bowling for Soup deserves to have that level of stardom because I think there's some of the few people on earth that would still be really cool down to earth guys and not abuse it. I, I genuinely do think that. But I will say the following that they have within the punk rock community is large, it's great, and it was evident by how many people showed up to the meet and greet that we had before the concert. So this venue is actually new to me. It's very, very close to where I live. Uh, it's in Delaware, so you had to hop the state border. And it was at a venue called The Queen. And The Queen is a really, really nice venue. It used to be an opera house. And they still have some of the really old, like, Adam and Eve kind of paintings that we have are, are kind of seen on the wall. And they have all sorts of cool stuff. And there's like a, in the upstairs area, there's like a really cool lounge with like TVs where you can hang out and watch. A lot more intimate. You get a lot more audience interaction with the bands, which I always really, really, really love. So we get there nice and early because we have to go there for the VIP meet and greet. So Bowling for Soup comes out, you know, they sit down, they play a couple of songs for us. Very, very beautiful uh, acoustic songs. Uh, they play Belgium, which is one of my, one of my favorite songs that I really, really, really like. So they played a couple of songs for us. They talked to us a little bit and then they came down for the photos. So we walk up, we get our photos with them and we kind of had to scurry off as they had to get more photos in that. I really kind of wish that I, I just had a little bit of, of a chance to interact with the band. I, I really wanted to tell Jarrett my story of how I got into Bowling for Soup, but he did like my shirt. Uh, the shirt that I wore was a Sum 41 shirt with like a blue demon on it. And he, and he said he liked it. And I was like, huh, I feel seen. That was really, really, really nice. From what I can gather from my very short interaction with them, they're just dudes. Uh, they're dudes like me, uh, you know, bald and you know, kind of fat, but they're dudes. And the interactions that we see with them, I feel is some of the most genuine that I've ever seen. You know, they don't have an air of arrogance. You know, they're not bitter, like say Smash Mouth was about not reaching super, super crazy good heights. They're just genuinely good dudes that want to perform and make music and, and play for their fans and have a good time. And I feel like that's really, really evident in how they hold themselves and, and their performance. So we go ahead, we get our our pictures taken. We go ahead and take a look around at, at, at the shops that we have here for the, different, for the different bands. I did get a couple of things and I'll go ahead and go over that when we get there. But one thing I want to point out before we get into anything deeper with the video is the charity that is run uh, with Bowling for Soup called Punk Rock Saves Lives. Now, I got a sticker and a patch for when I will eventually go ahead and make myself a, a, a punk rock jacket or vest. I just haven't had the, the, the brain power to go ahead and do that. But I, I will put a link down in the description below for this charity. Uh, this is a, a charity where what they do is they go to rock shows and they provide um, condoms, they provide uh, Plan B, they provide uh, uh, earbuds for your ears, they provide all different kind of stuff so you could, you know, you get a little frisky, you have fun, you have sex, whatever it might be, you can do so safely and cleanly and all that. But another part of uh, Punk Rock Saves Lives is that they have a sign-up list where you can sign up to donate bone marrow. So if someone has some sort of disease where their bone marrow doesn't work, I mean, that's life-threatening, you could literally go ahead, sign up, and it's very possible that you could be saving someone's life. So, you know, some people may be into being a donor. For those people, I'll put a link down in the description below. Just know I'm not being sponsored and I'm not gonna pull a completionist and steal $600,000 from a charity. Um, but I think it's a really, really nice thing to go have. Um, I did give them a little donation when I got my sticker and patch. Uh, everything that they had there is, of course, completely free for like condoms and stuff. So like you could go ahead and use that, no questions asked, hang on to it for later. I think that's a really, really, really good thing to go have, especially in this day and age. So please feel free to go ahead and support. So before we get into it, I had to admit, I had a couple of drinks that night. So you'll see in the videos that I'm a little, uh, I'm a little rowdier than my normal professional self. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, but they had some really, really good drink. One that was called 1985, which was like a melon liquor, liqueur kind of drink with some other stuff. I think it was tequila. And the other one that we had was called Almost, which was just Fireball and Ginger Ale. And holy shit, I never tried Fireball and Ginger Ale together, but it's freaking amazing. Highly recommend it, great combination. I love specialty drinks, I love that stuff. So go ahead and give it a shot for our legal drinking age. 
and um, you too can drink with Bowling for Soup. But before I go ahead and start rambling on any further, let's get into the show here. The first band of our night is a band called Don't Panic. Now I want to point out that as soon as they came on, I immediately began to panic. <laughs> Don't Panic is a band that actually has the brother of Rob, the current guitarist for Bowling for Soup. He, his brother is part of a band and they explicitly said that, oh, though, that's not the reason why that, that, that they're touring with us. Bullshit. I call bullshit on that. However, Don't Panic has a lot of great, great energy. Very entertaining to watch, very friendly with the audience, and I just had a great time going ahead and watching. We're Doug Panic from Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. We're very excited to be here tonight on this absolutely amazing tour. We're about a week and a half in. It's yeah. been the best experience of our lives. And we want to give it up for the bands who've taken us out to open this amazing tour. First of all, give it up for the band after us, Weedus! Of course, the reason we're all here. Who is excited for this evening's main attraction? I hope they would know who, Wait, who they're here to see. Wait, do you know who it is? No. I thought it was a fucking surprise, dude. Bowling for soup! <laughs> they're some of our favorite human beings on the entire planet, and we are so grateful they brought us out on this run. Uh, we're gonna keep rolling along. This next song, we have a music video for, and in it, uh, I'm dressed like Bernie Lomax and I die, and it's great. Rob from Bowling for Suits actually in the video, so go check it out. This one's called Slowly. Here we go! Thing about punk rock shows that kind of suck is that they're smaller venues so I feel that bands that deserve more attention more popularity than they get don't always get it so this is why when I make videos I try as, as best I can to cover all the bands that I see so we, we at least give them some sort of exposure even if I'm a small time boy like myself but uh, don't panic is like that real real nice punk rock feel to it nothing new Nothing necessarily new that I haven't necessarily seen before, but they're nice. They're, they seem to be a nice enough group of gentlemen that I would say, hey, why don't you give them a shot? You like punk rock? Listen to a couple of songs, throw it on your playlist, maybe pick up an album or two. But they were really, really nice, and they were really, really fun as the opener. band that we have is a band called Wheatus. Now you might be asking yourselves, Kurt, what the fuck is a Wheatus? Oh, I'll tell you what Wheatus is. <clears throat> I'm just a teenage dirtbag, baby. That's Wheatus. <laughs> I am new teenage dirtbag, but I have to admit I have fallen into the trap that many other people fall into is that you listen to one song by a band, you think, oh, that's their best song, and you kind of go ahead and exclude everything else. I think it is a sin that I personally have slept on Weedus for so long, and I think it is a sin that most of the world has also slept on Weedus as well. Weedus knocked it out of the fucking park. Very, very similar to the Flaming Lips. We just fucking slayed it.
and not just with Teenage Dirtbag, because when Teenage Dirtbag came on, people started going berserk. I started screaming and I'm yelling, oh, we're having a great fucking time. But their other songs too are just, are just great. They got a little bit of twinge of comedy here. He, you know, the, the, the singer, I forget what his name is, unfortunately, was very entertaining, very funny, very engaging with the audience, telling stories, kind of explaining, you know, kind of memeing on himself a little bit. Like, yeah, you know, a bit of a one-hit wonder. <laughs> and this guy was like, yeah, you guys are one-hit wonder status, for sure. But on the other hand, it's a little bit like nobody's gotten over your first song yet. Got him. I thought that was a very polite and generous way to put that. So I said, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to discover But it was just fun And it was fun watching the other band members too Like the, sto the stoic stone face of the bass player the, back the background singers Keyboard going ham and shit It was so much fun Special shout out to Weedus' guitar pedal I don't know how the fuck they did it But they were making some wild sounds I don't know if it was the keyboard Or if it was like this big ass multi-step pedal they had for the guitar to like change the sound and stuff but it was really really cool the different kind of sounds they were able to go ahead and throw out into this uh, into this theater here So we just absolutely, absolutely killed it. I have now gone against my sin of not being a Weedus fan, and I am now fully engulfed. I've been checking out a lot of their stuff, so I recommend you do the same. Support Weedus. They are so much more than Teenage Dirtbag, but Teenage Dirtbag still fucking slapped. <laughs> So with a middle band as entertaining as Weedus, just like I said before, with the Flaming Lips, if I had left after Weedus, I would have been satisfied and had a great time. But then we get to Bowling for Soup. Bowling for Soup starts off and people are chanting, Bowling for Soup, Bowling for Soup. And then the, then the theme song starts. It's been as a fucking theme song. So, so they get right into it. They start off with Almost and it's all fun from there. To kind of backtrack for a quick second, the album A Hangover You Don't Deserve starts off with three really big hits. Almost, Trucker Hat, and 1985. Reason being is back then, before, you know, Spotify and shit, when you were buying an album, it was on iTunes. So it'd be like you'd buy a single song. So what bands would do to try to get you to buy the full album, they would put the three best songs of the album at the front. So you would consider going ahead and buying the whole thing. And I want to stress that A Hangover You Don't Deserve is a fantastic album front to back. But the three most popular songs are, of course, in the beginning. Never go out of style. Now, this tour for Bowling for Soup is gonna be that album pretty much in a couple of songs at the end. This is why I highly recommend getting the VIP pass so you can see a little bit of extra. A couple of extra songs and meet the band. All that extra stuff is really, really fun. But of course, you know, we start off with almost what a banger. Trucker Hat, oh, I love Trucker Hat. And of course, 1985. <laughs> Nineteen eighty five is such a great song because again it just it just resonates more with me as time is going as time goes on. We got songs like Ohio or Come Back to Texas. Get all about the monster 
Personally, some of my favorite songs are Asshole, Two Seater, and How Could You Not Have a Smile on Your Face for a Song That's As Beautiful as Friends of Mine. Oh, it hits me right in my heart because I, I love my friends very much, and that song always reminds me of my friends, and it just, just makes me feel all nice on the inside. Now, throughout this set list, they're talking with each other, they're cracking jokes. One thing you might not know about Jared is that Jared has pretty severe ADHD, so he kind of gets caught off and starts going on tangents. How's it going, everybody? Yeah! It, it is awesome to see you guys. Thank y'all so very much for coming tonight to help us celebrate 20 years of a hangover you don't deserve. I met many of you before the show, and most of you asked me if we were gonna do a song that isn't on this fucking album. Ah. And it was a weird conversation. Cause I was like, it says it right there on the goddamn poster. We're gonna play this whole album. We made and it pretty clear. It's a really long album, guys. Yeah. There are 18 songs on this record. And we're gonna get through this together. Who's with us? Yeah! And at the end of all that, we'll play a bunch more songs that you know. And it's gonna be great. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm tickled pink to see you guys. Give it up if you're tickled pink to see us. Yeah! Thank you. Well, that was just a lead singer move so I could get a drink of beer. I've, I've never heard you say those two so, to, those two words in a row. What, tickled pink? Yeah. Well, the first time I tickled pink was in the eighth grade. <laughs> hey, we, I, we would, I thought we weren't going to talk about that. What, you weren't even alive. <laughs> when you were in eighth grade? Yeah. There's no way. No, you're right. <laughs> and you certainly weren't at the skating rink where that happened. Whoops. Yeah. Because he doesn't know how to skate. Well, that's one thing. Well, he didn't know he wasn't alive, Gary. Jesus Christ, what is happening back there? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, because we're playing the entire Hangover You Don't Deserve album from front to back, <laughs> that means this is the earliest Go ahead, Rob, do it now. And the most sober. You will ever hear this song ever again. <laughs> yeah! Uh, there was one part in the show where he forgot what the next song was and jumped to Smoothie King when there were other songs to play before that because they were doing the album in order. But it was such, such great fun. One thing that did kind of stink, though, is that Chris is not well. Uh, Chris is, you know, the really, really big fat guy. He's got a huge beard now. Unfortunately, Chris has been sick. And he has not been able to continue with this tour, uh, which is a shame. I, I, I love Chris. I think he's a funny dude. They're all funny dudes, but I, I, I love having the OG members together interacting and stuff. So I, I hope that he has a swift recovery. I hope he's able to, to, to do well and get back to touring because I, I would love to see Bowling for Soup with Chris. They actually replaced him with a mannequin. <laughs> they just had like a mannequin in the back. With a, with a shirt with his name on it. Then, the, for the encore, they normally, Chris is the one that doesn't has anyone chant, bowling for soup, bowling for soup. But he actually brought up a little hand puppet with a big white beard, and it was, it was funny. It was funny, but there is that little bit of sadness that, uh, that 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 Chris wasn't there and probably won't be for a big chunk of the tour. Maybe the rest of the tour, I'm, I'm not certain. But throughout, I mean, they were cracking jokes. There was one part where they, was, where they started memeing on U2 and, you know, with or without you, which is like a running joke of that particular night of the concert. There's one part where they played a little bit of Wonderwolf, just to, just to be funny. They started with, today is gonna be the day and they're gonna throw it back to you. But then the audience kept singing Wonderwall to the point where they were like, and maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me. And they were like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? It was so, it was just funny. It was just so much, it was just so much fun to kind of have that, that, that interaction. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. My favorite YouTube song. Right now, you I heard you two just got back together. <laughs> to, uh... Oh my god, it's the most Delaware thing. They just sing you two all the time. <laughs> oh 
one. That was great. Oh wait, this guy just said that that's Oasis. Who the fuck is that? The fuck is Oasis? I don't know. Oh, is this Isn't guy one of those things where coming. you're walking through the desert and you think you see something? Yeah. It's, it's either that or it's when you hit your brother, but you're like, let's make a million dollars, so let's just go back on tour. <laughs> I like Oasis. I like Oasis and YouTube. You know what, though? You like Oasis. Oasis doesn't like Oasis. Oh. <laughs> one part of the show that was also really nice is that um, they'll bring someone up out of the audience to pick a song. Um, it's like a big wheel and you spin the wheel and whatever it lands on, you know, that's how you go ahead and uh, decide what song is going to be played. The song they played was My Weenus, which is a really, you know, really a song about a dick joke, but it was it was funny. It was super, super, super funny. And what was nice is that they brought up a, a, a couple that had just gotten married and they were poking fun at him the entire night, being like, oh, so who else was there the night they consummated the marriage? And everyone's going, yeah, I was there too. And like, oh, you guys are fucking weird. But it was all in good fun. They, they, they were great sports about it. And um, congratulations on getting married, by the way, if you guys somehow see this video. But, but they brought the couple up on stage, they spun the wheel, and listen, I'm like 99% sure Jared can just decide whatever the song is gonna be and they can rig it. So I think that's, that's what would go ahead and happen. Um, but they landed on a spot. They won. They won a, a bunch of nice merchandise from the, from the band, and uh, they got to hear the song that they wanted. Woo! Woo! That's a hell of a honeymoon. Hell of a honeymoon is a good name for an album by not our band, but somebody else's band. That's like a U two album. But it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go viral, and make it fun of you too, and people are gonna be we like. We need to play in a giant ball. Oh, you know? I fucking hope so. Me too. Man, what about all the people that were there when they banged or whatever? They're still standing right there, holding their places. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they would hold their places when they would each take a break and stuff too. It was very it's nice. Because you're, you you're the two best friends that anyone can have. This song is called My Wiener. It goes like this. <laughs> There's a quick interlude here. You know the song Stacy's Mom, Stacy's Mom has got it going on? I forget the name of the band that actually does that song, but it's not Bowling for Soup. But see, back in the day, people thought that it was Bowling for Soup because they sound very similar. So Bowling for Soup thought they'd be smart, and they said, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to start doing Stacy's Mom. Now, sadly, because of this tour was very, very long with doing the full album, we didn't get a chance to hear Stacy's mom. I, I would have loved to hear it myself. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to, but I'll be back. I'll be back bowling for soup, and you guys better play Stacy's mom, because she's got it going on, and I want. the entire album and it was really really nice i gotta be honest i probably would have been satisfied if i if we had left after that but you know they were the concert wasn't over so i'm not going to leave till the show's done so then they bust out with high school never ends and i'm just like uh oh. Bowling for Soup, it is so true that high school does not end. And that's a great fucking song. A great, 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 great song that gets more, more true as time goes on. And then they did this. When we played 1985 third, you were like, oh my God, how does the band play their know, biggest know, hits third and then complete a show and still end with a fucking banger, right? Yes, yes. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, is 1985 is not our biggest song. Woo! It's, the, it's the, uh, with or without you. With or without you. I can't live. With or without you. That was way better than the last time. <laughs> 
That's a fucking good bit. Anyway, Rob's here. Hi, Rob. Hey, Jared. Do that shit, let's fucking do it. No, 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 not that. Not that. Oh, he's talking about this one. Stop it. Here's a hundred and four days of summer vacation. This one comes around just to end it. So the only problem with the reservation is finding a good way to spend it. Look, baby, Holy shit. When I tell you that people went berserk, including myself, loved it. Screaming and yelling, yeah, it's 104 days of summer vacation. I've never seen so much energy, except for maybe when I saw Owl City and they played Fireflies. That's the level of insanity that people had for this song, and I was loving it. There's nothing like a group of 30-year-olds getting drunk at a, at, a, at a concert venue in Delaware listening to Phineas and Ferb. Ain't nothing like it. So they get through that. We're cheering and yelling, screaming and crying, and having a great time. And they get to their final song, uh, The Girl All the Bad Guys Want. Another fantastic, fantastic song that I've always that I've always loved very, very much. You know, no real, I mean, that was the encore, so they kind of pieced out, and, and, and that was that. Ultimately, I gotta say, man, if, you, if you've never seen Bowling for Soup, Christ, you are missing out. Not just for their music and how it resonates with a younger and older me, but just for the way that they're just, they're just dudes. They remind me so much of my friends. Very similar to Blink-182, how they're, again, just a group of dudes interact with each other. It reminds me of that, and it kind of... Warms my heart to see them have so much fun with each other and crack jokes and be entertaining and funny and it just, it's just the perfect package. Bowling for Soup very well, in my opinion, is one of the best bands. And I said it once, I'll say it again. I want Bowling for Soup to have more of a following, goddammit. Two bands that I want to be popular is Motion City Soundtrack, because those guys fucking deserve it, and Bowling for Soup. You can bet your butt the next time Bowling for Soup comes around... I'm going to be right there singing along with him, and, it, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. So you might be wondering, okay, Kirk, what kind of merchandise do you have for us? Well, I have a little bit of extra stuff this time. First off, I have a guitar pick that I got from the VIP pass. Signed, of course, so that was very nice. I, of course, did pick up the, the tour shirt, which has a, a nice version of the, al of the original album, but it's with them as, you know, older which is cool. Tour dates on the back. I gotta say, it was hard picking a shirt because they had so many good ones. If they ever release more of these shirts online, which I hope they do, I'm probably gonna pick some up because they were really, really nice. One that I liked was like a big dude with a beard and he was eating a piece of pizza. And it was just that perfect like 90s, 2000s, like punk rock spray paint look. It was awesome. I of course also did get my little Bowling for Soup anniversary laminate. Not necessarily, you know, my thing to collect these, but it's nice to have and a nice reminder of the event. Of course, it has the little hole where they punched it so I get my poster. So I did get a signed poster as well. I eventually am going to go ahead and get this framed. But I do very, very much uh, like this poster. I think it's nice. And the fact that it's signed by the band is just, you know, also sweet too. I really like that. And lastly, I know I normally don't get these, but it was 10 bucks. It was super, super cheap. 
I picked up a little vinyl, which has Bowling for Soup and a band less than Jake. Also a really good punk rock band, by the way. And what it is, is just them switching each other's songs. So Bowling for Soup does a song by them. Uh, the Science is Selling Yourself Short. And then Less Than Jake does High School Never Ends. Uh, it was 10 bucks. If I can get this, if I can get this out. It was hot pink, which is nice. I don't actually have a vinyl player yet, but I'm starting to develop a collection because I've reached that age now. And um, I'm really excited to go ahead and, and take a listen to it. Like I said, 10 bucks for a really nice collectible vinyl from a band that I really, really enjoy. I think that was worth it. So overall, Polling for Soup was a fantastic time. You are doing yourself a disservice by not seeing them. Go support your local bands, support Weedus, support Don't Panic, and have fun. You know, enjoy the freaking music, man, because that's because that because that's what we're all here for. And so, my friends, thank you again for watching this video and supporting me here, getting to the end of Wheezing for Soup part two. And so as a special treat, I will leave you, my friends, with this clip. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one.